see how she goes. Whoa, crazy. So you can see here, rolls are fine, but any pitch movements are not. In my previous video, we talked about the gyro and flight controller. And in a lot of cases that we say we have a bad gyro for our quadcopter, we really just have a poorly designed flight controller. In that example, we use the Speedy V V2 version flight controller. And I went through some scenarios on that and ultimately just ended up powering it with a separate battery. And it cleaned up all the issues that V2 flight controller had. But that's really not practical. I was gonna do some more testing on that with putting on capacitance with a tantalum capacitor and electrolytic capacitor, but unfortunately I broke the ESC connector on the flight controller and couldn't get it to work again. Well, fortunately, SpeedyB was able to send me another V2 flight controller, which you can see I have right here. So in this video, we're gonna go through some different scenarios of adding capacitance to your flight controllers to fix them up. In most cases where people think they may have a bad gyro, I bet you it's just a bad flight controller design where you can add some capacitance directly to the flight controller itself and fix it up. You know, instead of spending another $60, $80 if you can't get it returned to get another flight controller, you can just buy a couple dollars worth of capacitors and throw them on there to remedy the issue. And this does beg the question, are we putting our capacitance, our caps, at the wrong location on our 4 one EOCs? Should we really be putting on the VBAT where the VBAT connects or the batteries connect to our ESCs, or should we be placing it on the flight controller directly? Well, let's check out the results and see what you think. So in the intro clip, you saw how the symptom presented itself. It was with forward flips, uh, primarily. And you can see right here how the, uh, the flight controller kind of goes nuts with electrical noise on this pitch axis. So this is the pitch, this is the roll axis. And it really, it's it just another way to look at the symptoms of that. In that previous video I talked about in the beginning of the intro here, uh, it that diff, that other flight controller is Speedy VV2. This is also a Speedy VV2, but obviously a different one. Uh, presented itself a little differently, so you can see that it's not one smoking gun. Like, hey, you look exactly for this, but the same symptoms you can see. Uh, that it's one axis over the other, which is really weird, honestly. That because uh, it's the same electrical noise uh, that hitting the gyro on either the pitch or roll axis, but you can see here with pitch moves that. Uh, it just goes crazy and then you can see how it can cause you to overshoot since the motors here This is the motor commands are really spun up. So I ended up doing a bunch of tests One was just wiring up a 35 volt 1500 microfarad capacitor to the VBAT on the flight controller and that did help The other thing that I ended up doing is I have a tantalum capacitor here that I have wired up and I'll show you a little bit more about those in a second and I wired that up to the 3.3 volt rail right here. So the 3.3 volt rail is what powers all the electronics. The flight control, all flight controller designs take the VBAT coming in and they pair that down to five volts and 3.3 volts to run the MCU, the gyro, things of that nature. So let's check out the different results that I got with either doing a big cap on the flight controller alone or just the tantalum capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail or doing both at the same time. So I ended up doing just separate flights with the different configurations and I have those all loaded up right here. You can see down here the index, but just to go through the colors, the orange here is no capacitance whatsoever. So that's the original flight video you see with the core issue. I mean, it has capacitance that we have the 1500 microfarad 35 volt capacitor on the ESC on the VBAT lines that stays consistent throughout the entire you know, testing here. This uh, kind of burnt yellow is the, with just the tantalum capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail. So you can see it has some improvement, but not all that much. The dark red or burnt red is with the 1500 microfarad 35 volt capacitor on the VBAT rail of the flight controller directly. So it's actually 3000 microfarads of capacitance uh, with electrolytic capacitors because there's one on the ESC and then there's one on the flight controller VBAT and you can see that result there and primarily again we're looking at the pitch access here and the lower 
uh, these lines are within this region is the less amount of electrical noise. The winner overall was the red line here where we actually had a tantalum capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail and also the 1500 microfarad capacitor on the VBAT rail of the flight controller directly. So two different types of capacitors on the flight controller directly. And of course, in addition to that was the 1500 microfarad capacitor, 35 volt on the ESC, like I talked about before, that's constant through all of these. So with that, let's just check out a short clip of what that looked like, the, the red line uh, with the flight controller. And honestly, it's completely flyable. It's not perfect, I'll come back to that here in a second, but it's fine. You wouldn't, without black box, even notice that it's there at all or the issues there. So what do you think? I mean, I would say without looking at a log that that was completely fine. There's no issue whatsoever. It completely resolved the issue. That said, if you look a little bit deeper under the hood, you can see that there's still a little bit of a touch of things there. So let's look at that. So this is the log of that flight and you can see my pitch access when I'm doing a forward pitch move that I do not see all the jumpy noise except for the very end here. You can still see some spikes when the flight controller is commanding the motors to 100% to arrest the move, which is the, the basically the most stressed that they get because of your super rates and how that works. You're going from full rate flip forward to saying go to zero pretty quickly and uh, your flight controller demands 100% of your motors, which you can see it's throwing off some electrical noise that's impacting the gyro signal up here and then causing the motors to have some spikes as you see right there. That all said, on the left here, this is the Speedy B V3 flight controller in this exact same quad. All the same settings, all the same. I don't have extra capacitance on it. It's just out of the box, putting the flight controller on it. Same manufacturer, just a different version, a better version where they improve the capacitance, apparently onboard capacitance on the flight controller itself built in. And you can see what it's supposed to look like when you have a forward flip roll. This is currently my favorite flight controller. I really wanted to like the Speedy BV2, but I, once I reviewed it and looked at it, I was like, ah, it has this capacitance issue, which seems pretty consistent. Um, but the V3 is all fixed up, so you can see what it's supposed to look like right here, and then what the version V2 looks like, even with the extra caps and the capacitance I put on it. So the bottom line is, obviously it's not just the gyro and a lot of times when folks say oh i have a bad gyro i have a bad gyro it might not be the gyro itself it could just be the flight controller design there is a consistency especially uh, i know there's a couple different versions of flight controllers i've seen out there uh, the speedy bv2 the lux had some issues as well uh, so you got to be aware of that and um, you at least can it seems throw some additional capacitance on it like we showed here it seems like the best is a combination of electrolytic on VBAT and a tantalum on the 3.3 volt rail would hopefully fix it up if you can't get a replacement flight controller. When you are wiring these up, do note that that's a little backwards that the dark line at the top, that's where you wire in the positive. Um, I know an electrolytic, it's backwards. If you see the little gray bar on the electrolytics, that's where you wire the negative. On these, the positive goes to this end and you can see there's connectors here in the back. So you just you know solder up to those on both sides there. What I ended up doing right here, and you can see I have a like little bundle, put a little bit of shrinky shrink on there to uh, 
button it up and then you can just wire that up. And I just kind of let that hang loose. It is probably best to have the shortest amount of wire you can possible or to put it directly on the flight controller if you can. When it comes to the electrolytic, you can see here, I initially, you know, you don't need to go all in with a 1500 microfarad you could probably get away with something smaller like this this is a 330 microfarad capacitor now this one's a 25 volt that was using the 35 volt for 6s power i will make links down below in the video description to where you can pick up some tantalum capacitors or something probably a little different that people are not used to if you didn't get to check out the video where i powered the flight controller with a separate battery check that out right there as always thanks everybody and i hope this helps